So because of who I am as a person, I keep buying uh, broken switches. Um, can't help myself. I've got two more completely disassembled. I, I've got the boards just chilling in anti-static bags until I can get to them. One of them has an internal short across the uh, battery terminals. It's probably got uh, like one of the voltage rails is short ground. I have no idea how I'm going to be able to fix that. Um, potentially the SOC is fine and salvageable and I do have the NAND so I might be able to salvage it if I get another console that has like a uh, bad SOC or something. And then I have another one that actually has the exact same issue as this one. Uh, but we're going to try and fix this one and see if I can get anywhere. Um, so, this one I've got pretty well disassembled. I've already got the back off of it, and I took the shield and the heat sink off. Uh, and in this one I have tested it, and unfortunately I am still getting an error. Uh, but if I plug that battery in and try booting it up, you notice we just get a blue screen and absolutely nothing else. Um, I'm my research has led me to believe that this blue screen on power up is a NAND problem, but a lot of people are suggesting it is a problem with the SOC. I don't know what's true. Um, the reason I suspect it is a NAND problem is if we pull that battery connector off pull the NAND off entirely, and then try rebooting it, we don't get that blue screen. It drops into RCM mode, uh, where if this were a vulnerable unit, I'd be able to inject a payload and go from there. This is unfortunately a patched unit, so I can't do a single thing. And it is on in RCM mode, but it's not doing anything because there's no payload to inject. But nonetheless, um, I have seen people suggesting that the problem is indeed the SOC, and I'm not going to rule that out. In fact, uh, that's just about all I can do to try and fix it, so let's try, let's see if I can't reflow the SOC and get that fixed. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and re-disassemble it. Um, like I said, it's already mostly disassembled, just a uh, few screws to get to because uh, what I'm gonna try I'm gonna try reflowing the SOC um, I've read that some people were able to get theirs working by doing that let's try it out full disclosure I have already tried reflowing this SOC but I did it improperly I did uh, I did something silly and I always yell at other people for doing it, and then I went ahead and did it myself. But I didn't have the proper tools for the job at the time. So that's why I'm thinking might have been unsuccessful, and that's why I'm going to try it again. Uh, I'm going to screw up here. should probably pop the fan out, too. Um, so the... Uh, oopsie doodle. The idea this time around is I'm going to pull the whole motherboard out because I don't want to ruin any of the rest of this thing uh, with the heat since it is all working. I mean, aside from the motherboard itself. Oh, that was the wrong one. Come on. Um... So instead of like trying to mask things off and protect it from the heat, we'll just remove the board entirely and then we don't have to do any masking. It'll be easier. Uh, then I'm just going to drown the SOC in flux and uh, hope for the best. Should be fine. Alright, alright, yeah. I think that's all the screws. Nope, one more. But anyway, last time I tried this, I, I just hit it with heat and nothing else. And, um, I don't know. It, 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 at that rate, I might as well have just not done anything. Actually, I don't recall if I did this one or the other board I have in here. This is a Marico unit, so it's a V2. This is a uh, Arista unit, so it's a V1. But other than that, they have the exact same issue. I need a spare.
butter. And I have no idea if this is going to work. And unfortunately, I don't know enough about the actual problem to even say for, for sure what it is. Um, my understanding of that uh, blue screen on boot up is that the um, there is a, God, I forget what it's called, but there is a hardware, um, hardware monitor for diagnostic purposes that monitors the boot sequence and reads uh, like JTAG codes off the SOC and other components and whatnot. And if it detects a boot failure, it will hijack the, um, the boot process and spit out an error code in the form of a colored screen. And in this case, blue, I forget specifically what blue is. Uh, you, can, you can look it up. Uh, there's like a Switch Homebrew wiki that lists all the error codes. And blue is either general failure or something NAND related. I don't recall which. But either way, I did some research on people trying to fix that specific error and it was suggested that the SOC be popped off, reballed, and then reinstalled. And if this doesn't work, that is going to be the next step. Anyway, it's amazing how small these boards are, you know? Once you've actually got the thing torn apart, for context, a Game Boy Pocket you know, it, it, it almost fits within the footprint of a Game Boy Pocket. Almost. I mean, with all the auxiliary hardware, you'd have a hard time fitting it in the Game Boy Pocket. But you know what I mean. Anywho. Boot up the hot air station. It is set to max temp of 500 dungarees. And now it is time for deflux. It's going to be my first time using this stuff, but we'll try it out. Uh, the old stuff I liked, it seemed to work extraordinarily well for hot air. because It was nice and tacky and it had some staying power. Whereas my liquid flux, you know, it, it flashes off by the time you hit um, proper temperature. But this stuff, uh, we'll see. This is some Amtec NC559V2TF. I don't know how it performs, this is literally my first time using it, but I'm just going to squeeze some down there and along the periphery and hopefully the hot air, you know, when it heats up it'll, it'll soak in nicely. Set that aside, put that right there. And I'm actually going to tape off this connector here and this connector to try and uh, to try and save them from getting roasted. Let me actually grab some aluminum tape. Right. And capillary action should get that flux going exactly where we want it. I actually did do a video on that. Anywho. I'm not sure if there is a recommended way to mask this sort of stuff off, but this is what I've done. It seems to work for me. I use aluminum tape specifically because we can get it to contour nicely and stick down, usually. Um, at least as soon as you get flux under there, all bets are off. But usually, if you get it stuck down beforehand, you can avoid getting flux under there. And it does serve as a heat sink so that if you are hitting those parts with hot air, um, it should sink the heat away a little bit. So it should give us just enough extra thermal headway to avoid roasting some of those parts. That's the plan at least. And yeah, I'll 
we'll just go around the whole thing. And I, I had a thought. I'm thinking, while I was grabbing this tape, I'm thinking maybe we should hit the memory modules too. Because the theory behind... The working theory that I have behind the actual issue that this switch is having is that it was dropped and something got knocked around that shouldn't have gotten knocked around. So in this case, it could have been the SOC or the memory modules. So my thought process is I should probably hit the memory modules too, just in case. Now, normally for... Um, BGA stuff like this, the manufacturer will put a little bit of underfill beneath the chip to kind of lock it in place. Uh, I don't believe Nintendo has done that for the Switch. And if they have, uh, well, that's my bad. But I really don't think they have. Uh, because when I hit this thing with hot air, I was able to move that chip around a little bit. And if there was underfill, I wouldn't have been able to do that. One more piece, and then it's ready for its perm. And again, all this tape is just to protect the adjacent plastic bits from overheating. And yes, I am going overboard with it, but it's easier to use too much than uh, have to deal with it using not enough, you know what I mean? Alright. And it'll have the added bonus of holding stuff on on the bottom just in case we get a little uh, get a little crazy. Add some more flux. For the memory modules. And here goes nothing. See, as the hot air comes up to temp, you can see the flux getting less viscous. I'm going to try and do my best to let it soak under the chip before giving, before giving her the beans. All at both sides. In fact, we'll even start with the memory modules. Why not? This is a either 12 or 16 layer board. There's a lot of copper, there's a lot of thermal mass in this thing, so it's gonna take a lot of heat. Which is why I have my soldering iron, or my hot air set to the max. But what we're gonna do, just keep the heat moving around one chip. And just wait to see if it moves. A little bump every now and then, just to double check I'm not missing something. Not to mention, like I said, it's a really thick board, so there's extra thermal mass, but this is also unleaded solder which has a higher melting temperature than leaded solder. Oh, there we go. I'll do the other one.
Ooh, I accidentally moved that way too far. It's probably fine, but that wasn't good. Okay, last chip. I already have all the uh, thermal paste cleaned off this. And last time I did this. But probably don't want to hit this with all the thermal paste on it. Also, a proper reflow station with a um, board preheater <clears throat> would absolutely be the proper way to do this. And yes, I do recognize the irony in me stating that after literally just making a video called uh, Use the Right Tool for the Job or something along that line. But this isn't necessarily the wrong tool, that's just the better tool. Can't tell if we've hit the temperature. Oh, yes we have. Let me just give that an extra couple seconds. Just to be sure. And now we'll let it cool down. Now from here, I am going to take a break for a few moments and let this thing cool down because this board is at least 500 degrees Celsius. Well, not at least, but probably close to. And like I said, it has a lot of thermal mass, so we gotta give it a few minutes. I will be right back. All right, it's been about 10 minutes and uh, it's not cool to the touch, but you know, it's also not burning me. So good enough. Let's pull off my tape cocoon here and uh, See if I did more damage than I attempted to fix. Oh, yeah, I was afraid of that. The board is covered in flux now. The tape did not seal as well as I'd hoped it would. That's okay. All the uh, plastic connectors look to be intact, so I will call that a victory nonetheless. Oh, that poor USB port though. So the next step, if this does work, uh, after testing it I suppose, uh, is going to be a bath. Um, this is still covered in significantly more flux than I thought it would be, so I'm going to quickly give this a bath with the isopropyl alcohol. I will be right back, and please trust that I'm not pulling the old swapperoo on the board with you. Um, there really aren't any, like, unique identifiers left on this thing, though. I, I kind of ruined that sticker. Um, I ruined that sticker. Don't just have to take my word for it. I'll be back. Alright, so I just got done giving it a bath, and then I just cooked it again just to make sure that uh, I got all the extra IPA evaporated out of this thing. Uh, it is the same board, I promise. It is slightly cleaner, but it definitely could use more better cleaning. Um, there is one, well, two problems that I've noticed. First is that the board does now appear slightly tweaked. Um right here I don't know I don't know if that's something I did or if it was already tweaked and I just never noticed um, but hopefully that won't give us any problems the second is that while cleaning I believe I knocked off that capacitor uh, comparing this board with one of the other boards I have is not the exact same revision but it's pretty darn close I can see there's one two three four capacitors here there is one two three capacitors here and a spot that looks like there should be a capacitor. So fairly confident that's where that goes. Um, 
that and it is the only pads I see that are big enough for this humongous capacitor. Um, humongous by switch standards. Uh, that is already tinned. So I'm gonna try it and hope for the best. Uh, in this particular case, I'm gonna try soldering it by hand. Or at least I'm gonna start soldering it by hand. I'm still probably gonna do it with hot air, but I'm at least gonna retin the pads. And because it triggers all of the keyboard warriors who think they know better, I'm gonna use the biggest tip that I have to do this. I'll even zoom in so you can see what I'm doing. I'm just gonna tin that pad. This is not the right tip for this, not because of the size, but because chisel tip on a flat um, flat surface just doesn't usually work. I always complain about this tip when I'm trying to do vias, and that is the same problem here. But I'll get it. So otherwise I'd be wrong and we can't have that. Probably don't even need to fix this capacitor, but rather have it not. Oh, you know what? I need more heat. I forgot about this. All right, let's try that again. I still think I need more heat. Come on. Yeah. All right. It was set to 300. Now it is set to 400. It's not flowing very well, but there's more solder on that joint than there was before. Let's get the other one now. And same thing. Cool. So now, I'm going to turn my iron back down before I forget. Bring that up and we're going to solder that with hot air. Add a little bit of flux, even though I just cleaned up all the flux. Oh, yeah, there we go. All right, I think we're good now. Give that a moment to cool down again. Actually, while it's cooling, the reason I can't come in here and 
sop up some of that extra flux. Also, for the record, I take back everything I've ever said about every other flux. This is the flux. This is some good stuff. I'm very pleased with the performance of it. Uh, the only thing I don't like is how sticky the boards are, even after cleaning them. Uh, but that is a that is a problem with my cleaning process, not with the flux. I will be buying more of this stuff. Whew. All right. Let's try it out. Let's see what happens. I can clean this off. Or try to. All that burnt flux. Alright, let's hope for the best. Uh, I forgot there's a there's an order to this. It's always annoying. Doesn't matter too much because I'm not going to bother plugging everything in, but... I want to plug in enough stuff. LCD connector, one of the most important. Does that go there? Yeah, that's gotta go there. Get that later. These connectors are an absolute pain in the butt. At this point, I'm starting to wonder if I damaged it. Eh, looks good. Just doesn't want to go in. Oh, 
Oh, here we go. Not at that time. Almost. Get the other spudger. I don't know if that's all the way in, but I have to give it a shot. This connector is essential to testing this out. That is the LCD backlight. We needed the LCD display ribbon. Did not need the card reader or the touch screen, but I never actually disconnected them from the chassis, so it was relatively easy to plug them back in. We do not need the I forget which one's which, or maybe they're both wireless antennas. Don't need either of them. Um, I know the top white one is a wireless antenna, though. We don't need this Joy-Con rail, but we're here. And if it works, it'll be nice to test it. It's not plugged in properly. Is this supposed to go? There we go. Don't need the speaker either, but again, eh, we'll leave it unplugged actually. Because those are kind of a pain in the butt. Oh, but no, we should have one speaker just in case the screen doesn't work. Like if I didn't plug it in all the way. Add the one right. Ah, screw it. Won't have to plug in all this stuff as he plugs in all this stuff. And before I connect up the battery, I want to double check that I didn't damage something along the way. Check for continuity on the ground and positive, and there isn't any, so I'm comfortable plugging a battery into that. My other board. Like I said, it has a dead short, and that's terrifying to me. Let's plug the fan in, too. Ah, it doesn't have a heat sink. We won't need it. Never mind. Um, let us quickly double-check without the NAND that we get nothing. Indeed, we get nothing. And with the NAND... Do we get the same blue screen? Oh, no frickin' way. <gasps> okay, so we don't have sound. Oh wait, yeah we do. Ha! Just kidding. What's it on? It's on 10.04. Um, I don't know how long we can run this without a heat sink. Let me grab a heat sink. Actually, you know what? Let me... Let me continue reassembling this thing. Holy crap, man. I, I'm... I did not expect that to work.
now need the SOC cover. Well, I don't need the SOC cover. I've heard that it actually performs better without it, but make sure it works stock first. Holy crap, man. Does this, do we put screws here or do they go in the shielding? I don't remember. We'll put them in here for now. And I might be missing the screw. Is this that bent one? It is. That's fine. I didn't put thermal paste in anyway. or anything. All right, let's try it again. That was only slightly cross-threaded. This one is too. Can't put a Joy-Con in there. All those are sticking out. That's not going in. Whatever, we don't need it for now. Oh, oh, ah. Well, you win some, you lose some. Oh, I see the problem. Oh wait, no. Plug that in. It's not in all the way. Try that again. Ah, that's a darn shame. That one, no, that's not what we want. Reassign, yeah, there we go. Let's see if we can pair this one. Boom, all right. Let's set that down on the screw, that'll be fine. Is this, that's a downloaded game, that's not, that's not downloaded. There's a lot of games on this thing. Uh, but they're all card games, kind of what I expected. Okay. Let's try. What was that asking me? To download an update? What's it trying to do? It's not online. I should have changed the language. This is also a really bad game to test with. I don't want to go through that intro. Apparently it was just resetting. Let's try that instead. That's a horrifying logo. Or uh, icon. Kill these 
these lights, why not? We have a fan. It's getting nice and warm. It's probably not cooling properly because it's supposed to draw air over these components. Suck it in that way, but there's also no thermal paste. You know what? I should have changed the language. I didn't think the game would be in the system language too. Ah. <sighs> That one, this one, no, I don't remember what setting it is, oh, that one, haha, -ha. oh, it's got to reset again, Jesus. I can't believe it's working. I am, I, I didn't expect that to work. I'm gonna have to go do the other one now. Well, it's in English now. Let's check the system log. Or we probably can't check that from here. Is there no system log? Am I making that up? I could have sworn there was one. Alright, well, never mind. Let's double check the serial. Is that the correct serial for this? That is! Oh my goodness, it even matches. I didn't expect that to happen. Share error information. See? It records it. It just doesn't... Don't let you look at it. I think that's something you have to have a uh, hacked switch for. Why would you ever set that to limited range? I'll just leave that on automatic. start it. I don't care about the time. That's a horrifying icon. Whoever you are, if for some reason you're watching this video in the off chance, you know, you're actually not Japanese and watching videos in English, you know, or whatever, I don't know. Seek help. <laughs> it's horrifying. Load. There's nothing to load. Apparently there is something to load. I don't know. It seems to be working, man. I'm just going to try and play for a few minutes and see if any other issues crop up. I am honestly astounded that this worked. Skip. Confirm. That's... Oh. How about random? Okay, I could have sworn this game is supposed to be in English. <laughs> I don't actually remember. It's been such a long time since I played it. At least the text is in English now. <laughs> Let's see if it charges. Because I did not charge this battery in this console. And it's charging. I don't know, man. 
seems to be working. Let me turn that down a little. I don't know. I think we're good. I think at this rate, I gotta like actually sit down and play it for like 40 minutes and make sure everything else is good. I I genuinely did not expect that to work. No shit. Well, there you go. If you have a switch with that problem, I guess it's worth giving it a shot. I mean, it, it needs a new touch digitizer. This thing is like all scratched to hell. Um, I think the frame's a little tweaked too. Yeah, it's not exactly straight anymore, but whatever. Screen's fine. Ooh, it's not charging anymore. What happened? Oh, it is. It just says it's not. Yeah, there it goes. Um. Yeah, new touch digitizer, new left Joy-Con rail. I think that's it. Oh yeah, and a new frame. They always need a new frame. I don't understand how they get so tweaked. Yeah? Shit. Sure. I forgot to switch this around. Check both sides. But it says it's charging. There it goes. What do you think the problem with this left rail is, huh? <laughs> Could be any number of things. Only other thing I gotta test now is if it docks, but I'm gonna test that off screen because my uh, docks, my dock is not currently set up. I'm not gonna do any capture footage anyway. Um, We're gonna swap out this heat sink. I was worried about this heat sink not working because there was a giant crease in it, and I can just feel a huge thermal variance between like before and after the crease. So I'm gonna buy a new heat sink too. But jeez, man. I felt a hot spot right here. Oh yeah, and that's right where the CPU is. Yeah, I don't think this thing is cooling properly. Lack of thermal paste aside. I know these things get a little warm. I don't think it should be getting this warm though. But it's still working. So maybe I'm mistaken. I don't know. That's all I got. Um, I, I'm, I'm astonished, man. For the cost of some flux and a little bit of tape and some time, just fix this thing. I genuinely did not expect that. And yet here we are. I guess I'll format it, clean it up, because I don't know who this is. Probably shouldn't be on their account. Hopefully it's not, um, oh, I've got lots of friends. Poor dude, man.
You must have loved your Switch. I'm sorry that it broke on you, but it's mine now. I bought it fair and square. It's probably been a while since they used it. Region, that's probably why it's uh, still in Japanese. But I'll format it later. Not too worried about it now. Hopefully it doesn't have any parental controls on it. Let's find out. It does not. Excellent. And auto brightness works. I didn't expect that. Especially after how I just treated that sensor. Or mistreated. Well, there we go. That's all I got. I'll catch you all next time. Thanks for watching. Um, I'm gonna... I'm gonna do this one now. This is the, um... Mariko one. I'm gonna do literally the exact same process. And, uh... Hopefully it'll work, because this one has literally the exact same symptoms. Uh, boots to a blue screen, boot it without the NAND, boots to a black screen, straight in RCM mode, no problems. And, um, Bob Jonte. I'll make a note in the description if I'm successful, but, yeah, get you all next time. Alright, quick addendum. I've had this thing running for, I don't know, half an hour, 45 minutes from now. Um, still, zero issues that I've noticed. Uh, still getting quite cozy, quite toasty rather, um, but seems to be running fine. Uh, battery is almost charged, or it is charged now as you can see, so it's been a little while. But anyway, the point is this one, which I, uh, I also did the exact same thing on. Uh, I had the board out and was doing some... Some reflows, I just dumped the parts everywhere so I could start reassembling it. Uh, this was... This one, uh, like I said, it had the exact same issue. Uh, I was mistaken when I said I can get into RCM mode. I can't actually because this is a V2 switch, which uh, doesn't really have an RCM mode. Uh, but the problem with this one in particular, this is actually something that someone else had sent to me. They had attempt, attempted to repair. Uh, they were doing a pretty good job of it, but unfortunately, I guess someone smashed this thing with a hammer. They had dropped a new screen digitizer in it, and while they had it open, they replaced the front housing. But um, apparently it tweaked the board enough, and this is that Marico unit, the HAD CPU. Let's, uh, let's see if we were successful. I said I'd put it in the description, but I'm feeling confident enough to just drop it into the video. Uh, we should have nothing, indeed, nothing. There's the NAND, same as the other ones. And this one might have a an actual board problem because, you know, I said that other one was bent, but this one, <laughs> this one was also quite significantly bent, but anyway. Ah, uh, yeah, it's still blue. Okay. Well, so be it. We're, we're at least one for one anyway. Um, so the next step will be... One for two, rather. Next step for this one will be to pull this SOC and uh, see if we can't find a donor board. The SOC itself is probably fine. Or rather, sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. Pull the SOC, reball it, and then reinstall. Um, and if we're on the same page there, then I'll have to try dropping it in uh, a donor board. But, well, shoot, that's what I get for getting cocky. Oh, well, it is what it is. Um, maybe I'll drop a new frame in this housing and put the other one in there, because this one still has a, still has a nice new digitizer and screen at the very least. Um, but it is what it is. So be it. Oh, well, thanks for watching, guys. Catch you all next time. Potential second addendum. Uh, upon reviewing this board, I noticed a component that looks really crooked or even backwards. And based off of its proximity to the power management circuitry and the whole SOC, I'm going to go ahead and assume it's pretty important. So 
Um, I'm gonna pull this board out again and double check that. I don't have another Merico board to compare this to, so I don't know if this is gonna be the same on this board, but let's just take a quick peek just for reference. Actually, it does look like the layout's pretty similar. So we have that uh, three pin. I'm guessing it's just a transistor or something, but it could be switching something important on and that is not where it's supposed to be. So I'm going to pull this thing apart again. Yeah, the other switch is still going. I haven't dealt with it yet. I'm going to pull this thing apart again and see if I can't figure out where that's supposed to go. Beer bee. All right, here we go. Um, just overlaid the uh, footage, or overlaid, I just inserted the footage of me attempting that repair. Uh, it was mostly in the right spot, just over a little bit. Uh, well, I just tried fixing it with hot air. Did it under the scope. Had to tear it all apart, but it is what it is. Was that it? Nah. I didn't think I'd get so lucky. Well, it is what it is. Um, I think that I think I knocked that component around when I was doing hot air because it's not like I wasn't right in the immediate vicinity. But um, it's kind of a bummer that that wasn't it. But at the same time, I'm kind of glad it wasn't because such a little component like that I didn't think could be responsible for triggering this failure mode. But anyway, that's all I got. I'll catch you all next time. This time I think I'm done. I'm just going to throw this in a box and uh, reapproach it when I know more. Thanks for watching, guys.